Hello, my name is Elisa, and I am uh, welcoming you to Go Show Readings by Elisa, where I will be reading Select Go Show, uh, written by Nietzsche and Daishonin. Um, originally, the intent was for anyone who was unable to read, such as someone who is blind or visually impaired or has had something happen in which uh, which has obstructed their vision but of course this is um, for anyone who enjoys listening to the go show being read to him or her so I hope you will enjoy my presentations um, this is the first although I'm um, re videotaping it because I got interrupted the first time I tried to to it. So I'm hoping to get um, the entire Go Show of On Attaining Buddhahood in this one video along with the background information which I will include at the end. I am primarily reading from the um, originally uh, published Go Shows um, in the eight volume collection called The Major Writings of Nietzsche and Daishonin going more or less in order unless I have a request or other um, impetus to read something out of order. Um, and it does turn out that in both the newer writings of Nietzsche and Daishonin as well as the major writings of Nietzsche and Daishonin, Volume 1, the first Go Show is On Attaining Buddhahood. Um, in the newer collection it's called On Attaining Buddhahood in This Lifetime. There is um, uh, almost as long a background as the Go Show itself in the original um, publication from, what year is this, 1970 or 80? Let's see. First edition was 1984, uh, 1979, and then 1984 is the edition I have. Um, but I want to read a couple passages, a couple paragraphs from the newer um, background material because it's very succinct. And then at the end of reading the Gosho, I will read the background from uh, from the same volume as the Gosho itself. So in uh, the writings of Nietzsche and I shown in background material, um, it, it points out that this writing, which uh, was uh, presented to Toki Jonin in 1255, it says, of all his writings, Nietzsche's writings, from the mid-1250s on, um, on attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime, focuses most clearly on the tenets of the Daishonin's Buddhism. Many of the other works of this period are aimed chiefly at refuting the erroneous doctrines of other schools and discussing theoretical questions. This short essay not only reflects the theories Chentai formulated based on the Lotus Sutra, but also reveals the concrete practice for attaining Buddhahood, namely chanting Nam Yoho Renge Kyo, that is missing in Chentai's theoretical framework. Myoho Renge Kyo is the title of the Lotus Sutra, but to the Daishonin it is much more. It is the essence of the Sutra, the revelation of the Supreme Law itself apparently in this work are both the depth of his thought and his conviction that nam myoho renge kyo is the only teaching that can lead people to buddhahood in this lifetime so now i would like to go ahead and read the um, earlier version of on attaining buddhahood um, page three of volume one of the major writings of nietzsche and daishonin on attaining Buddhahood. If you wish to free yourself from the sufferings of birth and death you have endured through eternity and attain supreme enlightenment in this lifetime, you must awaken to the mystic truth which has always been within your life. This truth is Myoho Renge Kyo. Chanting Myoho Renge Kyo will therefore enable you to grasp the mystic truth within you. Myoho Renge Kyo is the king of sutras, flawless in both letter and principle. Its words are the reality of life, 
and the reality of life is the mystic law, Myoho. It is called the mystic law because it explains the mutually inclusive relationship of life and all phenomena. That is why this sutra is the wisdom of all Buddhas. Life at each moment com encompasses both body and spirit, and both self and environment of all sentient beings in every condition of life, which uh, the footnote says means in any of the ten worlds or Ichin and Sanzen. So all beings in every condition of life, as well as insentient beings, plants, sky and earth, on down to the most minute particles of dust. Again, life at each moment encompasses both body and spirit and both self and environment of all sentient beings in every condition of life, as well as insentient beings, plants, sky and earth, on down to the most minute particles of dust. Life at, every, at each moment permeates the universe and is revealed in all phenomena. One awakened to this truth himself embodies this relationship. However, even though you chant and believe in Myoho Renge Kyo, if you think the law is outside yourself, you are embracing not the mystic law, but some inferior teaching. Inferior teachings means those other than this sutra, which are all provisional and transient. No provisional teaching leads directly to enlightenment, and without the direct path to enlightenment, you cannot attain Buddhahood even if you practice lifetime after lifetime, for countless eons. Attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime is then impossible. Therefore, when you chant the mystic law and recite the Lotus Sutra, you must summon up deep conviction that Myoho Renge Kyo is your life itself. You must never seek any of Shakyamuni's teachings or the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the universe outside yourself. Your mastery of the Buddhist teachings will not relieve you of mortal sufferings in the least unless you perceive the nature of your own life. If you seek enlightenment outside yourself, any discipline or good deed will be meaningless. For example, a poor man cannot earn a penny just by counting his neighbor's wealth, even if he does so night and day. That is why Miao Lo states, quote, Unless one perceives the nature of his life, he cannot eradicate his evil karma. Unquote. He means here that unless one perceives the nature of his life, his practice will become an endless painful austerity. Miao Lo therefore condemns such students of Buddhahood as non Buddhist. He refers to the passage in the Makashikan. Although, quote, although they study Buddhism, their views revert to those of non-Buddhists, unquote. Whether you chant the Buddha's name, and the note here reminds us that um, Buddha's name, as used here, means nam myoho renge kyo okay. So whether you chant the Buddha's name, recite the sutra, or merely offer flowers and incense, all your virtuous acts will implant benefits and good fortune in your life. With this conviction, you should put your faith into practice. For example, the Jomyo Sutra says, The Buddha's enlightenment is to be found in human life, thus showing that common mortals can attain Buddhahood and that the sufferings of birth and death can be transformed into nirvana. It further states that if the minds of the people are impure, their land is also impure. But if their minds are pure, so is their land. There are not two lands, pure or impure in themselves. The difference lies solely in the good or evil of our minds. This is a very important passage, so I'd like to read the paragraph once more. Whether you chant the Buddha's name, nam myoho renge kyo recite the sutra or merely offer flowers and incense, all your virtuous acts will implant benefits and good fortune in your life. With this conviction, you should put your faith into practice. For example, the Jumyo 
Jomyo Sutra says that the Buddha's enlightenment is to be found in human life, thus showing that common mortals can attain Buddhahood, and that the sufferings of birth and death can be transformed into nirvana. It further states that if the minds of the people are impure, their land is also impure, but if their minds are pure, so is their land. There are not two lands, pure or impure, in themselves. The difference lies solely in the good or evil of our minds. It is the same with a Buddha and a common mortal. While deluded, one is called a common mortal, but once enlightened, he is called a Buddha. Even a tarnished mirror will shine like a jewel if it is polished. A mind which presently is clouded by illusions originating from the innate darkness of life is like a tarnished mirror, but once it is polished it will become clear, reflecting the enlightenment of immutable truth. Arouse deep faith and polish your mirror night and day. How should you polish it? Only by chanting nam myo ho renge kyo What then does Myo signify? It is simply the mysterious nature of our lives, from moment to moment, which the mind cannot comprehend, nor words express. It is simply the mysterious nature of our lives, from moment to moment, which the mind cannot comprehend, nor words express. When you look into your own mind at any moment, you perceive neither color nor form to verify that it exists, yet you still cannot say it does not exist for many differing thoughts continually occur to you. Life is indeed an elusive reality that transcends both the words and concepts of existence and non-existence. It is neither existence nor non-existence, yet exhibits the qualities of both. It is the mystic entity of the middle way that is the reality of all things. Myo is the name given to the mystic nature of life, and Ho to its manifestations. Renge, the lotus flower, symbolizes the wonder of this law. Once you realize that your own life is the mystic law, you will realize that so are the lives of all others. That realization is the mystic Kyo, or Sutra. It is the king of sutras, the direct path to enlightenment, for it explains that the entity of our minds, from which spring both good and evil, is in fact the entity of the mystic law. If you have deep faith in this truth and chant nam myoho renge kyo you are certain to attain Buddhahood in this lifetime. That is why the sutra states, quote, After my death you must embrace this sutra, those who do so shall travel the straight road to Buddhahood, unquote, from the Lotus Sutra, chapter 21. Never doubt in the slightest, but keep your faith and attain enlightenment in this lifetime. nam myo ho renge kyo nam myo ho renge kyo Respectfully, Nichiren. I'm going to present the background now from the same volume. On attaining Buddhahood background, some two years after he first proclaimed Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, which is 1253, Nichiren Daishonin was living in Kamakura. That city was the seat of the military government, or shogunate, and this letter was addressed to an official serving there on the military tribunal. His name was Toki Jonin. Jonin, I guess. Toki Jonin and he was a staunch follower of the Daishonin throughout his life. Thirty other letters, including the letter from Sado and the true object of worship, were addressed to him or his wife. On Attaining Buddhahood was written in 1255. Wow, he got 30, 31 letters um, from Nietzsche and Daishonin, him and his wife together, so that's pretty impressive. The letter opens with the Daishonin equating Myoho Renge Kyo or Nam Myoho Renge Kyo with the t truth of life. Throughout history, most religions have theorized that the supreme law or being transcends the physical world. Buddhism teaches that the law and the phenomena we observe around us are inseparable. Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, the law of life, 
gives rise to all phenomena, and all phenomena are manifestations of Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. That is what is implied by the reference to this in this letter to quote the mutually inclusive relationship of life and all phenomena. Unquote. According to the Jodo doctrine, this world is impure, but a magnificent pure land lies far beyond the western horizon. This was the only paradise to which humans could aspire, and then only in death. Therefore, the title of this Gosho, which implies enlightenment in this lifetime, had a remarkably fresh ring to it. The Daishonin frankly rejects the distinction between the Buddha and human beings by saying that there are no fundamental differences between a Buddha and a common mortal. However, a person suffering from de delusion is called a common mortal, but the same person, once enlightened, is called a Buddha. A further explanation is to be found in, quote, the true entity of life, quote, it's another Gosho. All people have the potential for Buddhahood within, and this is why on attaining Buddhahood says, quote, you must never seek any of Shakyamuni's teachings or the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the universe outside yourself, unquote. Nietzsche rejects the concept of a distant, quote, unquote, pure land, and the condemnation of this world that that implies. A land is pure or impure only to the degree that the people who inhabit it are pure or impure. Both purity and impurity exist in any land and vary according to the life condition of the population. Hence the Buddhist law of the oneness of life and environment, also known as Esho Funi. Nichiren Daishonin then states that the only means to rid ourselves of illusions and awaken to the unchanging truth of life is to chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. By so chanting, we form an indissoluble bond with the life of the original Buddha, through which the precious heritage of enlightenment can flow. He next defines the literal meaning of Myoho, or the mystic law, which is Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Life is eternal and continually repeats the two phases of life and death. In the manifest state, life, it exhibits a quality of existence, and in the latent state, death, it exhibits a quality of non-existence. But the true nature of life is far more profound than anything conveyed by either of those two concepts. Myo, meaning mystic, indicates the essence of life which cannot be grasped logically or perceived through the senses. Ho, or law, indicates the manifestations of life which function in accord in accordance with various natural principles. The Daishonin explains that life itself is the entity of the middle way, which is the reality of all things. In other words, nam myoho renge kyo. All these concepts, which constitute the core of his philosophy, must be pondered and then utilized in practice if we are to illuminate the innate darkness of our lives and become enlightened in this lifetime. What a great go show. Thank you for joining me and uh, if you enjoyed listening today, despite my occasional slip-ups in pronunciation, um, please give me a like and um, and then subscribe to the channel if you'd like to know about additional readings, some which are already posted and uh, should be many more to come in the future. Thank you so much and also share this with anyone you know who might enjoy listening to these readings. All the best. Thank you again.